Hi everyone, good afternoon. It's, uh, it's Tuesday here, uh, April 27th. I uh, hope you uh, are all um, doing well with your exams and uh, wrapping up the semester. Um, my name is Mike, I'm a sport coordinator in athletics and recreation at Seneca College. Um, this is our Be Well Live, so if you've been tuning in all semester or all year rather, um, you would uh, see that we do like a daily kind of check-in, activity, tips, um, all sorts of fun stuff. So today we're gonna to be doing our Ask a Trainer series to continue our Be Well Lives, which is our midday check-in. I'm gonna be joined by Chris Souza, who's our fitness coordinator for our King Campus operations. And we're gonna be just kind of chatting um, regarding some common misconceptions and myths uh, regarding health and fitness, maybe some things that you thought were true, but maybe they're not, or they're a bit more difficult to, um, to grasp. So uh, Chris is gonna be joining me here. Uh, in about a minute and we'll let him in. Um, so just to kind of give you the rundown on what we're going to be discussing, uh, we're gonna discuss the, um, I guess, misconception um, surrounding lifting heavy weights when you're resistance training versus, um, I guess, lighter weights at a higher repetition um, or higher volume. So the, usually those two are looked at as completely two different things when it comes to developing muscles. Um, and most people kind of um, would assume that lifting heavier weights automatically means that you are bulking up um, versus lifting uh, lighter weights is going to basically make you more toned, if you will. Um, so in theory, some of that is lined up with a certain type of training that you'll do. Um, but there's a bit more, um, a bit more to it. So we'll dive into that. Um, the second uh, misconception that we're going to discuss um, is, I guess this is a big one for sure, is cardio training, um, any kind of cardio aerobics um, versus resistance training for um, reducing um, uh, fat, basically. Um, usually, I guess most people kind of associate doing cardio with reducing body fat. Um, and they think of maybe uh, resistance training not so much. They think again more like bulking. Um, so we're going to kind of uh, decipher those two things and um, paint a better, um, uh, easier to grasp picture as to what really happens. Um, and then uh, second uh, or third is going to be um, when it comes to maybe dietary. So um, this will have to be careful because obviously uh, we're not registered dietitians, um, but when it comes to taking certain supplements um, for, uh, for our health and performance and stuff like that. Okay, um, so, uh, so basically, yeah, hopefully Chris joins in here um, and uh, I will let him in. Just wanna make sure he's not currently here right now. Um, so I can kind of start off with our first one. Um, which is basically lifting heavy weights associated with bulking and lifting lighter for higher repetitions. Um, so I'm just going to let Chris in and we'll, um, we'll get first uh, misconception. Um, so Chris should be joining in here, I think, right now. Hope everyone's having a good morning so far. Hey, Chris, how's it going? Good, Mike. How are you? Good. Not too bad. So I kind of did a full detailed intro there so no need to, uh, to repeat myself I guess so if you want to dive right into it um, I kind of laid out the table for you to maybe kind of give us some perspective as to our first myth um, which is basically you know oh, lifting heavy automatically means bulking up so I don't want to do that and then the opposite which is I want to lift lighter higher repetition for toning um, so do you want to kind of maybe elaborate on those two things and why most people associate them together yeah, for sure. Um, first of all, I guess there's there's not really, you can't really shape or tone a muscle. Um, you're doing one or two things. Like a, mu a muscle can either atrophy, which is you're losing your muscle mass, or you can hypertrophy, which is it's growing, right? So you can't really, um, like, dictate what that muscle is going to look like through training. So a lot of people think that higher reps are going to give them a more toned muscle, and um, lower reps is going to make them uh, get a bulkier muscle, um, which is not the case. It can either grow or it can atrophy. So um, that look that that they're kind of referring to is, is a leaner look, which comes through a lower body fat percentage and a uh, higher muscle mass. Um, so right. and the bulkier, bulkier look is usually uh, a higher body fat percentage and a uh, higher muscle mass. So it's not really that you're, you're – toning the muscle it's just that you're leaner so you can see the muscle the definition a bit better yeah um and the bulk the whole bulking myth too um 
like women, some females think that if they lift weights, they're going to get bulky. It's a common misconception. Um, even for, for males who have um, usually higher testosterone levels than females naturally, it's, it's even hard for them to bulk up. So it's not like you're going to grab a weight, do a couple bicep curls, and then have huge biceps. <laughs> um, there's a lot of other things that come into it. It's not just automatically yeah. going to make you bulky. Um, so yeah. yeah, that's the misconception I hear a lot is that someone will grab a lighter weight and, and think that they're toning the muscle. Right, um, right. Which, which is, is kind of impossible. You can either grow or not grow. So yeah, um, yeah. And it really all comes down to the intensity and working to fatigue and, and the muscle will adapt with progressive overload, meaning basically you're just um, putting a high demand on it with quality movements so that um, have, you know, three things. It's either volume, load, um, any kind of intensity that's working at a percentage of your one rep max. So when you lift an object, depending on how much you can lift that weight, your muscles are obviously having to work hard and adapt to move that object. Um, so non-dependent, if you are doing 50 repetitions of five pounds or 10 repetitions of 100 pounds, basically, if you're working to fatigue and you're fatiguing that muscle group, to the point of you're exerting yourself where like you have reached that kind of threshold um you're still kind of working at that same intensity level so the the math works itself out so the percentage and the repetitions will kind of meet um now obviously there are certain physiological things that are happening um that will define maximal strength versus muscular endurance uh, which may be confused maybe there's some confusion regarding that versus the bulking and toning, because like you said, you can't physically alter the, sh the shape and the kind of um, density, the, what, yeah. you know, of the muscular cells and the fibers. Um, you can recruit more fibers, which will basically lead to hypertrophy, which is the growth of the muscle cells and everything. Um, but the type of training you're doing, that's where the misconception is. So you can achieve both of those goals with a combination of both of those things. Um, and that's, right. that's the beauty of it. And a lot of athletes do that when they're periodizing their, their training and they're doing certain phases and different um, loads and all that fun stuff. So I think it's obviously like, well, it's cheesy, but incorporate both because you'll achieve the adaptations nonetheless. Right, right. I'll say, I will say that uh, higher volume, higher frequency training, the science does show that that's more adept to um, hypertrophy, so, so gaining muscle. Um, so I would say moderate moderate weight um, will help you grow muscle, but super lightweight high reps isn't going to necessarily tone the muscle. Um, right. But yeah, that's that's one one misconception that we'll probably you'll, you'll probably hear passed on in the gym forever. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, and I think obviously a lot of this is too for, you know, our general population because um, like you had said earlier, like, um, you know, let's say people who are afraid of bulking up or getting too muscular, um, if it was that easy, <laughs> gyms would be out of business and there'd be a magic oh, sure. solution yeah. um, and it's not, right? So um, it's, um, it's just how you do it and the quality and the intensity at which you're exercising, right? So, um, so hopefully that uh, helped kind of clarify some of the differences between those two things. Um, so our next one is also um, kind of related um, in that same ballpark of a really popular kind of misconception is um, like cardio training versus resistance training for weight loss or fat loss rather to be more specific to reduce body fat percentage most people correlate or associate doing cardio to achieve that goal uh, when in fact it could quite be the opposite and or it most certainly is both for sure um, so do you want to maybe start us off with that huge uh, misconception regarding those two things yeah for sure um, I think uh, what, with this misconception I think you need to take a look at uh, like how you're defining cardiovascular exercise. Um, it's, yeah. it's a type of exercise and, and you can get, you can get that cardiovascular response through any activity, um, not just running on a treadmill or uh, on a stationary bike. There's all different ways to do it. Um, and what's happening during that, uh, during the, like if you're doing a cardio session, you're burning calories and you can burn calories multiple ways. Um, but for whatever reason, when someone thinks about weight loss, fat loss, a staple is always cardio in their program, uh, which isn't necessarily the case. Um, 
whatever whatever way you can find to stick with your program, whether that's through weights, it could be through cardio, um, it could be through just daily activity. That's kind of the route you want to take. It doesn't your your weight loss plan doesn't have to always include cardio. Obviously, it's very healthy for us. Mm -hmm. uh, it strengthens our heart, um, but it's not necessary uh, for weight loss. Um, so it's just a misconception that I see a lot. Did you want to add anything to that? Yeah, no, I definitely am glad you brought up the kind of definition, right? So if you look at basically what the definition of cardio is, I think maybe we use the term too often or we're kind of maybe confusing it specifically with aerobic training or endurance training, aerobic endurance, right. which is basically prolonged exercise where you're maintaining a certain target heart rate. So let's say 65% of your resting heart rate or your, your max heart rate um, and you're, you're maintaining that prolonged period. So, uh, you know, let's say 10, 15, 20 minutes or more, um, we're kind of automatically just, um, oh, that's what cardio is. But no, that's basically aerobic endurance, which is specific form of cardio. So yeah, cardiovascular is basically just your heart vessels and lungs working to transport oxygen to the working muscles. That's it. Um, so obviously we do that just by breathing and anything, right? So yeah, the, the misconception is, well, why do most people automatically put that with fat loss? So I think maybe we have to distinguish why there is that assumption. So like, why do you think yeah. there, that that is? Um, I mean, there is, there is some science to su suggest that when we're working a certain intensity, which usually falls under that cardiovascular zone, um, there are a lot more calories from fat that are be going to be used. Your body's going to use your fat sources as their main source of energy, right? Okay. Um, yeah. Now, where this gets tricky is that you could be burning um, most of your calories. So you're using that energy source, which is your stored body fat. You are using that, but you could be if you're if you're doing weights or anything else where it's not necessarily cardiovascular work you could be burning a, a, a higher total of calories so that's right. what you want to take a look at so if you're running 5k and you know roughly this is how many calories i'm burning and a big percentage is from fat it doesn't really matter if you're burning more calories doing a different activity do you know what I'm saying yep. there? Um, yep. Because you, at the end of the day, you're burning more calories. It doesn't matter if yep. it was coming from uh, fat as your fuel source. Um, it, what matters is the total calories in versus total calories out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think when people hear, oh, I'm using, <laughs> I'm using fat as my main fuel source, that's not, that it does come into play. But if you're burning more calories doing something else, yes. then you yes. probably collect that activity for sure. Yeah, exactly. So I think, again, that comes down to the physiology, the anaerobic versus aerobic, where we're using, you know, um, our glycogen stores for immediate explosive movements with longer recovery. And, um, and I can see how that they could think that because it's your energy source. Um, but obviously, there are metabolic changes. So when you're doing um, any kind of resistance training or strength, um, any any power, um, it's a whole other ball game that your your metabolism is kind of um, you know, altered in a way um, that your lean body is now on fire. Like, so you're really utilizing your lean body weight. Um, so you can actually burn more calories at a higher quality rate um, instead of doing three hours uh, endurance. Do you know what I mean? So it's kind of, I think, uh, I, I think maybe this one isn't as much um, as a misconception anymore because I think people with cross training and, um, more efficient at home workouts that we're trying to squeeze in in 20 minutes instead of an hour and a half workout. Um, you know, obviously we don't have gyms right now, so we're trying to do workouts at home or whatever we can get our hands on. Um, and I think we're trying, I think maybe the general population are understanding that you can do total body movements in a small space to get your heart rate up and work strength and endurance and everything. Um, and it's just as effective. So I think people are kind of catching on to that, but the myth or the misconception of, for cardio and fat loss is still uh, discussed. Absolutely, yeah. 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 <laughs> I think in, in my opinion, um, if you're resistance training, you're actually at more of an advantage because that lean muscle mass that you're building is going to be consuming calories even when you're at rest, right? Like your 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 muscle tissues is metabolically active, so it's going to be burning calories even while you're at rest. Where if you're going for a, a run, 
as soon as you're finished, I mean, not as soon as you're finished, but when you stop running, you're stop your, your calorie, you're, you're not burning any more calories, right? Yeah. Um, so when you're weight training, you're, you're burning calories as you're doing it. But then because that muscle mass is metabolically active, it's, you're going to be consuming calories even at rest. Yeah. And then just to finish off as well, like those are all such good points. Um, what you said at the beginning, which is cardio obviously is still important um, for certain for certain things, right? But we're specifically talking about fat loss because that's what the misconception was. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah, but obviously like physical activity at a lower heart rate for prolonged periods of time is so vital for preventing heart disease, metabolic syndrome, diabetes, all these things, uh, lowering your blood health. pressure, everything. <laughs> mental health too, right? Yeah, we, we've, we've uh, a lot of research is coming out on the mental health benefits of prolonged um, low intensity physical activity as well. So. Yeah. Absolutely. All, all things to consider. Definitely don't throw it out. <laughs> You're definitely going to need it, but we yeah. just want to kind of go over the fact that you don't, it doesn't have to be a staple that you do every single day and you don't want to put all your eggs in, in your, your cardio basket, right? You want to have a rounded routine. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so that's perfect. And then our third and final one is uh, a little bit, maybe more of a sensitive uh, topic just because of uh, maybe the industry and everything, but we're maybe going to touch a little bit of the surface of possible um, uh, supplement uh, use when it comes to, are they required or do you need them? Uh, I think maybe if you look at like our demographic and a lot of students who are doing some form of resistance training and they're on, either on a budget or they just can't get enough food, maybe they buy some protein powder um, or other types of supplements. Um, and I think maybe we were going to kind of touch base on, you know, just letting everyone know that maybe they're not necessary or maybe certain ones are. What's your take on that? Um, so as a, if I put myself in the uh, position <laughs> of a college student, I would say uh, most likely you can get most of your nutrients, macronutrients through your food. Um, you don't have to worry about purchasing supplements. Um, and I would even go as far as to say, if you're not getting at least six hours of sleep, uh, drinking enough water, um, eating enough. So like just through your regular diet, eating enough like, fruits and vegetables. So we'll say five to seven servings of fruits and vegetables a day, right. your water intake and um, your sleep, then you have no business um, spending money on supplements. Um, as harsh as that sounds, it, because supplements aren't going to help uh, replace any of those things. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say start there and then you can do your research and price out different supplements, see what you need. But they, um, supplements are exactly that. They're a supplement to what you're already doing. Yeah. Um, and you want to, yeah. you want to cover those, those things first and then dive into the, if you, if you think you need it, um, you can look into to doing your own research. There's a lot of good uh, websites on online. Um, I'm trying to think of, uh, there's one really good website that basically just breaks down all the, the, the supplements that are on the market. Um, I think it's examine, examine.com. Um, it kind of shows you all the studies that are on it and uh, breaks down um, the side effects, everything like that. But well, um, just keep in mind, it's a very heavily marketed industry. Um, it's, it's, it's actually pretty regulated in Canada, but there's still things that kind of slip through the cracks. So there's some shady websites with shady products. Um, yeah. But definitely the most popular um, supplements are usually that I hear about uh, people asking about in the, in the gym or uh, creatine, protein, um, right. and then weight gainers, weight gainers as well. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, like you said, uh, rest, like sleep, um, are you drinking a lot of water? Like all those things first, right? Um, if you're not getting those and then you're still going, then maybe you're just going for the show of it, right? Like maybe you think that the, you need to do that as part of the culture or something, right? Um, so you have to obviously make sure that you have the options and we've done plenty of posts. You guys can check out our tons of content that we've done on um, nutrition, like recipes, um, ideas for protein. If let's say you're a vegetarian or a vegan, uh, you need ideas, you need cheap, easy, uh, um, budget-friendly meal prep. Chris, obviously, you've done so many of those sessions. Like the, uh, We have a library of all that content. So if you guys are um, short on ideas, um, before you go shopping for uh, supplements, like please check out our content um, for 
all things food and, and stuff like that. So, um, and I think too, obviously, if there are certain dietary restrictions or deficiencies that maybe your physician has um, said, you know, obviously like iron would be a popular one, calcium, if maybe right. even if you're eating tons of things that have high content of those um, vitamins and minerals and you're still deficient and um, there are obviously are exceptions, but we're talking more performance related, I think, um, that uh, you, you have plenty of resources uh, when it comes to your food and everything. So, um, and that's pretty much as much in depth as we can get. Um, that's kind of beyond our scope. <laughs> um, but I think that's yeah. just kind of our, uh, our opinion. I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to add just before we leave. No, no, I would say, yeah, those, those three things and then a consistent program, um, start, start there and, uh, until you can get to that and, or unless your doctor uh, prescribes you certain, um, nutrients that are, that are lacking in your diet, then, and stick to those yeah. and then um yeah once you have that once you have those kind of three pillars under your belt and you're you feel the need then then yeah do do lots of research um there's lots of good websites with good information examines one of them awesome perfect thanks chris well thanks everyone for joining us uh this semester um as far as i'm aware i think this might have been our last uh ask a trainer series um, for the semester and potentially um, until maybe the fall. I think we might check in the odd time in the summer, but um, hopefully uh, everyone's kind of learned a few things. And um, we obviously have different perspectives as well uh, as far as us. And um, it's always nice to kind of share different ideas. So thanks everyone for tuning in with us uh, and have a good rest of your exams and transition to next semester. Take care, everybody. See ya. Be well.